Welcome to A Wealth of Useless Knowledge, where we dive into some fun and entertaining topics. You're sure to learn something new here and maybe even have a laugh or two. Now let's get into today's video. You know them and you love them. We use them just about everywhere from social media to the group chat and even reference them in our day-to-day -day lives. No doubt for the multitude of emotions we have, there is a meme to match every single one. Meme culture has been a thing for well over a decade now, but with the rise of social media, we've been able to take our love for memes to the next level. I've made videos previously on the origins of some popular memes in my meme origin series, and this is part three. So if you haven't seen the other two parts yet, don't forget to check those out. I'll have a link to that playlist for you in the pinned comment and in the iCards. But in this video, we'll be taking a look at 10 more popular memes and their origins. So grab a snack and stay tuned. The Squat and Squint meme, also known as Squat Bay, was a meme that took over the internet in 2018 and has continued to be a go-to choice for a variety of situations that people find perplexing or unbelievable. The woman in the meme, Kaylin Elisa, was posing for the gram and a lot of the pictures she took involved a squat pose so she could get all her best angles. And since a lot of people weren't blessed with Meg Thee Stallion's knees, ah. naturally all that posing would get exhausting. After the photo session, Elisa talks about how tired her knees were and that one of the photos ended up being an outtake. She decided to post a picture of the aftermath on a Twitter, now known as X, alongside the caption, when your knees are crying after you've squatted for the gram. In a How I Went Viral interview with BET, Elisa gives more insight into how the photo went viral and how it changed her life. My name is Kaylin Elisa, um, AKA Squat Bay, and you may know me from my viral meme. That was the squat and squint. I was getting ready for my friend Kirsty and Nigel's baby shower. My sister India, um, she took the picture. My other sisters, um, Ayana and Justine, it's four of us, we're the squat squad. And so in most of our pictures, you know, we gotta hit a little, little ratchet squat. I don't know where we got it from, but I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> Anytime soon. Every girl knows the, the go-to moves. Well, as of lately, we've just added this prison squat to everything, and I don't know why, but it takes a couple takes to actually get it. So you're down there for a while. You have to readjust yourself, make sure everything looks good. Um, so that's why my knees started to ache up on me. And I was like, ooh, let me just take a little break <laughs> and rub these bad boys down. The next day, I get the pictures, and I'm like, oh, that's a cute picture. Let me just put it on Twitter to be funny. When I initially posted it, I, I posted it with actually what was happening. So when your knees like are hurting, when you squat for the gram, that's the actual caption for it. I thought the picture was funny. I mean, it's one of my favorite pictures out of that whole shoot. And I knew that it was the after to what I put on Instagram for actual like likes and stuff. Some of my very close girlfriends and Twitter, black Twitter, <laughs> just ran with it. Um, of course, the first one I think was like the $20 out the door, like the club entry fee. And then it just kind of went from there. And I didn't realize that it was gonna be funny, funny outside of my timeline until that next morning I woke up and one of my friend Jada's tweets had gone viral and then somebody else's tweet had gone viral. And I was like, Oh wow. The day that Little Duval posted it, that was kind of like a, okay, so a celebrity has it. Let me, that's kind of crazy. When a short man has an attitude, so you have to get on his level to see what his problem is. <laughs> so, that, so that was his, that's actually one of my favorite ones. And then maybe like three weeks after that is when the Shade Room did the Battle of the Memes. It was me against SpongeBob, like toe to toe. I literally threw my phone on my bed and just screamed. I was like, the Shade Room? Cause once you make the Shade Room, like, that's when I really realized that it had gone viral. And then after that, it was on TV a couple times, news channels all over were using it. Yeah. That week, Top Golf reached out with doing a promotional stunt for them. And then I kind of got to celebrate at Top Golf. I'm gonna say Rihanna, it was Fenty, but <laughs> Rihanna reached out and they sent me some stuff, which was awesome. Um, Cause I love Fenty, so that was, I mean, that's every girl's dream is to get a little box from Fenty from the mail, like, oh my goodness. I don't have any negative experiences from this thus far. This has all been nothing but positivity. As far as comments, I mean, of course, there's gonna be people that have negative comments and stuff to say, but 
I mean, how can you be mad with all this good going on? They keep their hedges <laughs> trimmed and stuff so it makes for a perfect Instagram background. It's kind of a wave of emotions that I'm feeling right now. Just kind of gratitude and just thankfulness. Just kind of a humbling experience as well. Kaylin has taken her newfound virality in stride, getting a good laugh out of it all. Even tweeting that her goal is to put smiles on as many people's faces as she can. Going on to say that it's been a treat for her soul. Since going viral in 2018, she's continued to be a recognizable face in the meme world, and there's no sign of this meme fizzling out anytime soon. The disappointed cricket fan meme hit the interwebs back in 2019 and has since been used by people all over to express their disappointment about things. One of the most disappointing things ever for sports fans is when their team is missing their crucial plays. Carving down the third man, does it carry? Oh, no. Come on, man. Come on, man. What is he doing? And funny enough, this is the exact situation that spawned this popular meme. Oh, no, you can you believe it? What's a Pakistan doing today in the field? Back in 2019, Australia faced off against Pakistan in the Cricket World Cup, and during the match, a cricket player on the Pakistani team dropped a catch, disappointing several fans in the audience, one of which was Mohammed Salim Akhtar. After the poor play, cameras panned out to focus on the shock of fans in the stands, and one reaction in particular had people cracking up. <laughs> Shady cameraman. <laughs> The body language, coupled with the expression on Akhtar's face, made it an instantly memeable moment. The photo was posted by a Facebook user that same day, where it started picking up traction. It was also posted by the International Cricket Council themselves, and continued to gain some momentum. Before long, the meme had left the sports scene and began to be used everywhere for all the disappointing things people had seen or experienced. In an interview with Know Your Meme, he gives further insight into what was going on in that moment. Hello everyone, my name is Sare Makhtar. You might recognize me from the disappointed cricket fan meme. I live with my family, two sons, uh, 13 and 9 in London. Ever since the meme has become famous, people recognize my face, particularly because of my bald head been two years and the surprising element of that is it's still continuing. The disappointed cricket fan meme is basically a guy with a shaved head who has a very angry and disappointed look about him and with his hands on his hips but the way it resonated uh, and has resonated with everyone worldwide. I was uh, very reluctant to go to that cricket match. It's only because one of my friends from the past, based on his encouragement, we made a decision to drive all the way to Taunton, which was three hours. We didn't realize the tickets we had bought, they were right by the playing area. So in that instance where the meme was actually born, the ball came uh, and I was basically trying to catch it. While they were focusing on the player, they at the background, they could, they could see me. So then obviously the camera uh, focused on me and uh, showed my full emotions and probably I was just still there <laughs> perplexed, angry, disappointed and very, very angry. How could he drop a dolly uh, catch, very easy catch uh, in front of me? And that's how the meme was born. As soon as I sat down, I started receiving calls for my friends and my colleagues in the past who had seen me on the live coverage. But within five minutes, then my friends, my family, my cousins, they started sending me memes. But then people around me who were sitting around me in that uh, area, is, is that the bald guy we just saw? Uh, and, uh, and then the, the jaw-dropping moment happened. The broadcasting team, they came up with a camera cue and would you mind giving us an interview? I thought, really? That, that was the moment when I realized, oh, something has happened. Living through it was tremendous uh, out-of-body experience because I have heard about big people becoming uh, memes, but going through it, living through it was simply jaw-dropping. But the best reaction was from my parents. Till to date, they want to see all the interviews that I've done, every article that has been written about me, so it gets them excited. But on a totally contradictory kind of a reaction, my immediate family, my wife and my kids, they just want to get over with it. 
so it's a, it's a very demo, a very different kind of emotions from uh, different people the experience of being a meme was as i mentioned jaw dropping it's humbling and it's scary at the same time but then when i restarted sharing it the ones that i looked i uh, like that's when it grew more and more and then i just i just embraced it uh, yeah it's it, it has been a very interesting journey the subject as well as the fans of this meme found it to be quite hilarious and even Akhtar himself tweeted loving the meme guys next match is crucial this meme can still be seen everywhere from Facebook to Reddit to this day and has earned its spot in the meme culture canon. Whether you're mad about your favorite team losing a sports game or a rage quitting in your favorite video game, the you mad bro troll face meme is a choice meme for internet trolls all over. It uses the base image of a popular rage comic meme troll face and often adds the simple text, you mad or you mad bro? The meme has been around for about 16 years now and it's still a staple in meme culture. But where did it come from? According to Know Your Meme, the troll face image was created by then 18 year old Oakland based artist Carlos Ramirez using Microsoft Paint back in 08. It was initially drawn as a part of a webcomic about the pointless nature of trolling and appeared first on a 4chan video game board. The image was later uploaded to Ramirez's DeviantArt page under the pseudonym Win as a part of the Rage comic titled Trolls, and it quickly caught the online community's attention. The character is known for his grin that epitomizes the facial expression of internet trolls seeking to annoy people online. The image quickly started being used everywhere from in forums like Reddit to gaming and sports communities and several variations were made, eventually expanding it to become one of the most highly recognizable memes to date, even spawning some video parodies. <laughs> As a result of the popularity of the meme, it's reported by sites like Business Insider and Kotaku that due to owning the copyright, the creator of this iconic meme has been able to rake in six figures as a result of the meme's success. So I think it's safe to say he's laughing all the way to the bank with this one. <laughs> The Futurama Fry Face, otherwise known as the Not Sure If meme, has been used to express doubt or suspicion for quite some time now. The meme became really popular back in 2012, over a decade after the episode it came from aired. The image was pulled from Season 2, Episode 11 of Futurama entitled The Lesser of Two Evils that aired in the year 2000. In the scene, Fry snatches a map from who appears to be Bender, except he's suspicious that it may in fact be a Bender clone. Hmm. The look of suspicion on Fry's face would later become one of several memeable moments from the hit animated show. The base template of the meme was most commonly shared with the phrase, not sure if on the top and or or just on the bottom and people all over quickly began to fill in the blanks of the template with tons of scenarios of things they were skeptical of. Versions of the meme started being posted everywhere from Reddit to Meme Generator and more. This meme is still highly recognizable to this day as the show Futurama continued to spawn hundreds more memes of various characters throughout the years. Next on the list is the brother may I have some oats meme. Brother, may I have some oats? As we've learned by now, most anything can be a meme from images to text and GIFs, even videos. One such video meme many of you have seen suggested here on YouTube is the Brother May I Have Some Oats meme. Brother, may I have some oats? No. I am starving, brother. The tall, skinny figure has thrown the oats at me. Me, brother. I believe they have taken a liking to me. Although this has been a booming meme of 2024, did you know this meme is actually making a comeback rather than an introduction? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. As it originally hit the meme scene way back in the late 2010s. 
One of the earliest known uses of the meme was a post of the pair of portly pigs shared to Twitter back in 2016 and it quickly started gaining attention, making its way onto a bunch of other meme sharing sites from 4chan to Tumblr and more. The image version of the meme later got brought to life by the YouTuber Joe Capo, who was well known for posting a video series of the meme with a voiceover back in the late 2010s. The meme has had its latest resurgence this year thanks to the dramatized voiceover done by fellow YouTuber Burial Goods, in which he tells a story of one pig enjoying some oats while the other asks for some, to which they are instantly denied. No. The funny thing about this meme is that people either find it hysterically funny because of the dialogue between the two pigs, paired with the dramatic voiceover stylings of the narrator, or they're just perplexed and utterly confused trying to figure out how it became so popular. This meme is in a way an anti-meme, as the joke is not clear or defined, and that's kind of the whole point. As for where the original image for the meme came from, the backstory goes back even further than 2016. I'm talking way back to the 1800s. The image was derived from a painting titled A Pair of Pigs and was created by an unknown artist. That painting currently resides in the Compton Verney Art Gallery as a part of their British folk art collection in Warwickshire, England. Have any of you guys been there and seen it in person? Let me know down in the comments. This meme is arguably one of the most popular memes of 2024, and it'll be interesting to see how long it stays on people's radar this time. The blinking white guy meme, aka the Drew Scanlon reaction, is one that people started seeing everywhere back in 2017. Despite it being a commonly used meme, many people had no idea where it originated. The meme features Drew Scanlon, who in 2013 was working as a video producer for the gaming website Giant Bomb. He appeared as one of the commentators in the web series titled Unprofessional Fridays, designed for paid subscribers within their community. In the episode, Drew performs a double take reaction during a live stream of their staff playing the farming game Starbound, when his fellow game commentator Jeff Gertzman makes this casual statement. Uh, so I've been doing some farming with nice. my uh, with my hoe here, I can kind of till what, the... What kind of a... so what is that? Oh yes, a till the ground? Yeah. Oh, with your hoe, I see. And then once that's done, you can plant seeds. In an interview with BuzzFeed, Scanlon gives further insight into how the viral meme started. My name's Drew Scanlon, and some of you may know me as the blinking white guy meme. I was working as a video producer at a website that covers the video game industry called Giant Bomb. Part of my duties as a video producer, I not only was shooting and editing a lot of video, but because we were a really small team, uh, everyone was always on camera kind of all the time. Uh, and we, we did this weekly show called Unprofessional Fridays uh, for our premium subscribers. And it was basically just us sitting around uh, playing a bunch of video games. The Giant Bomb fans are amazing and they're very, <laughs> they're very passionate. So um, there were animated GIFs being made of us constantly. So that part was not really new to me. When that happened, it always was sort of contained within the Giant Bomb community or like maybe video games at large. The video the meme was recorded in just one of these sessions where we get together and play games. Uh, and my, my coworker Jeff was playing a game called Starbound, which involves uh, farming and he said uh so i've been doing some farming with nice. my uh with my hoe here i can kind of till what, the what kind of a so what is that what, uh, what kind of a and that's the reaction i made to that sort of double entendre i guess uh and it was just like one joke in a two-hour show it didn't at the time it didn't stand out as anything particularly special <laughs> one of the weirdest things is that Four years went by between the film, when that video was shot and when the meme kind of reached its critical mass. I don't really know why that happened. Uh, I always just attribute it to internet chaos theory. The point where I noticed that it had sort of blossomed into this larger thing, like outside of the gaming community, was people mentioning to me on Twitter that they saw it used somewhere else. Like their mom used it on Facebook or something. Like she has no idea who you are, but she used it on Facebook. And there were also a lot of tweets uh, using it that had like tens of thousands of likes and retweets. Once I got a sense of how large it was, it, it was honestly a little scary uh, because it felt very much out of my control. I mean, nothing on the internet is within anyone's control, really. 
but uh, it just, there's something about the scale that was a little alarming. At some points, it almost doesn't feel like me. Like, I just made a face on a live stream. Uh, it, was, it was other people that, you know, trimmed that out and then discovered a way to use it. I have been recognized one time uh, as the meme guy because of the fact that it was so long between the filming of the video and when it kind of got popular. I looked pretty different. Like, I'd, I had more facial hair, my hair was longer. So, uh, shout out to uh, the guy at the Dublin Best Buy. <laughs> I went to Brazil and I met some people who uh, had heard somehow that the guy from the Blinking White Guy meme was coming. Like, not that was not, I wasn't there to be a meme, I was there to like, you know, ask them questions about video game development in Brazil. And they were all very excited to, to meet me, which, you know, that was strange, but, uh, but kind of fun, which I think strange, but kind of fun, kind of sums up the whole thing. This simple two second, seemingly innocuous facial expression pulled from a two hour long live stream way back in 2013 would later end up becoming one of the hottest memes of 2017. And it is still used to this day to express shock and disbelief in a wide range of situations. Speaking of being shocked, if you've made it this far and are still watching and enjoying the video, I'd be shocked if you didn't just go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. It's free and easy to do, plus it helps the channel out a lot too. Keeping fun content like this coming your way. I appreciate you. As we've learned by now, memes can simply go viral for seemingly no reason at all. But one does not simply go viral without being posted on a forum first. The one does not simply meme is one that dominated the internet during the early 2010s, as it could be seen everywhere from Reddit to Twitter. According to the meme archive site Know Your Meme, one of the earliest reported instances of this meme being posted was on a comedy forum site called Something Awful back in 2004 with the caption, one does not simply drive into Mordor. Since then, variations of the meme continued to spread before reaching peak popularity around 2012. The base of the meme that became highly recognizable was the still frame of the scene originally taken from the first of the Lord of the Rings trilogy entitled The Fellowship of the Ring, released back in 2001. In the now infamous scene, the Council of Elrond reveals that an evil ring must be destroyed by being thrown into the fires of Mount Doom, a volcano deep in the territory of Mordor to which the character Boromir promptly points out the difficulty of said task by saying, One does not simply walk into Mordor. This screenshot was then used as a template to make a wide range of memes with the variety of things that can't easily be done, and the rest is history. Another popular meme of 2012 was the overly attached girlfriend meme. The glaring facial expression coupled with the creepy captions to express all the things an overly attached and obsessive girlfriend would say created a meme template that began floating all over the interwebs. As classic of a meme as this is, many people still don't know where the image originated. Back in 2012, Justin Bieber released a single called Boyfriend. If I was your boyfriend, never let you go. And as a part of the marketing campaign, he also launched a woman's fragrance called Girlfriend. During the promo run, he also ran a contest that encouraged fans to create parodies of his song from a girl's perspective. One person who decided to take part in this contest was YouTuber Lena Morris. If I was your girlfriend, I never let you leave. In BuzzFeed's I Accidentally Became a Meme series, Lena breaks down what spawned the face and how the meme blew up. My name is Lena Morris, but you may know me as Overly Attached Girlfriend. This all started in 2012. I was 20 years old in school to become a teacher. Just living with my college roommates, going to work, life was pretty normal. And I came across a contest that Justin Bieber was having. He had a hit song at the time called Boyfriend, and he was releasing a new fragrance called Girlfriend. So he asked fans to make a parody song from the girlfriend's perspective. So I got really excited and started writing lyrics right away. I was a Justin Bieber fan. I mean, keep in mind, I was 20 years old and Justin Bieber 
was like a teenager. I wasn't really like obsessed with him. I think it was kind of fun, like silly music that I enjoyed, but it wasn't like a real obsession like a lot of people may think it was. When it came to the lyrics of the song, I knew that I wanted it to be funny. His original lyrics, I think, are I'll never let you go. And so I just kind of took that and made it to the extreme and, and that kind of took off from there. If I was your girlfriend, I'd drive you up the wall. Question here with, yeah, I'd always call and call. The creepy face was definitely like a last minute decision. I was on like my fourth take of this song and I realized that there's this really long instrumental period of time at the beginning of the song where I was just sitting there not doing anything. So I just sort of decided to stare straight into my webcam and make the creepiest face I could make. I had no idea how profoundly this would affect my life. I posted the video to YouTube for the contest the night of June 6th, and then I think like right after that, I shared it to my Facebook page. It was before I went to bed that night that I knew people that I didn't know in real life were watching it. I remember my roommates and I were staying up watching the numbers come in and there was like 52 comments at one point and I knew that I didn't know 52 people that would take the time to watch and especially comment on the video. And then I went to bed and then I woke up and it was a lot bigger than it was the night before. My first memory of that day is walking out into my living room and my roommates turning their computers toward me and saying, you're a meme. And that's when I realized my face was everywhere. All day, I was just getting like texts from my friends and seeing comments online. And I couldn't get online without seeing my own creepy face staring back at me. Like my friends and I thought it was mostly just funny. Like I, I feel like I'm really lucky that I was in on the joke. I know that's not the case for a lot of other people that kind of wake up and realize their face is all over the internet and they've become a meme. But there was no negativity. At first, it was just like all really, really cool, positive, like what's happening, this is crazy. I got to be on the red carpet at the American Music Awards. I also got to go to Singapore where I had a staring contest on stage with Jessica Alba, which was like simultaneously one of the coolest and weirdest things that's ever happened to me. Looking back at everything that happened, I'm super, super grateful. My life in literally every possible way changed completely overnight and there were so many highs and there were so many lows and I look back at that time with a lot of fondness. I'm very happy that it happened and I think overly attached girlfriend is like the best thing that's ever happened to me. As a result of the meme, the overly attached girlfriend persona was able to spread. So much so that she even got invited to be a part of a Delta safety video that featured a variety of other internet meme personas. She's even collaborated with another popular meme on the internet, Bad Luck Brian, who I've covered previously in part two of this series. Although the widespread use of this meme has since died down, it'll forever be one of the most iconic memes to come out of the 2010s era. After the overly attached girlfriend came the distracted boyfriend meme. This one was one of the most viral memes of 2017 and it's still relatively active to this day. Many people have posted a variation of this meme or at least seen it floating around. Funny thing is, this meme was found to have originated from a stock photo taken by photographer Antonio Guillem. In an interview with Wired Mag, he gives insight into how the meme came to be and talks about not even knowing what a meme was until one of his photos went viral. He goes on to say that he wanted to expand his portfolio, so he got together with the models and planned on having a session which was meant to represent the concept of infidelity in what he describes as a quote, playful and fun way. The actors who play the boyfriend and girlfriend in the photograph are known by their stage names as simply Mario and Laura and the photos were taken in Catalonia, Spain. Their facial expressions were designed to be exaggerated and funny, and it's even reported that when at the shoot, they were having a hard time pulling off the facial expressions as they kept laughing in between shots. The photo was later posted on the popular stock photo site Shutterstock, alongside the caption, this loyal man walking with his girlfriend and looking amazed at another seductive girl. 
The internet would soon get their hands on it and begin labeling the models different things that were being disloyal, and thus the meme was born. The article goes on to say that one of the earliest uses of the meme was traced back to a Turkish Facebook group devoted to progressive rock music, also known as Prague, before spreading across a wide range of meme sharing sites and forums, eventually making its way over onto Twitter and Instagram. Fun fact, the photo that spawned the meme is only a small piece of a series of all the other photos featuring the same models as they've worked with the photographer on other shoots before. People have even gone to the lengths of taking all the stock photos in the series and putting them together to create their own short stories with them. One of the most popular ones being Funnier Die's version. This was it. The breaking point. The straw that broke the camel's back. He proposed. She wasn't ready for that, but he just kept proposing again and again. And she was clearly warming up to the idea. But the first time she finally said yes, Mario blew it. He couldn't help himself and Laura was not happy. He tried to win her back. He begged her, but the damage was done. They broke up. She remembered what it used to be like when they were together. She missed him. She thought back to the first time she ever saw him, and it dawned on her she wasn't so innocent herself. So she took him back. They got married, went on their honeymoon, moved in together, and celebrated. And that's when it happened, again, and again, and again. And this time she realized this was happening all along. It was over. There was no going back now. He'd gotten too distracted. And now, Mario and Laura were through. For good. <laughs> oh, the drama of it all. This meme has dominated the internet for years, and it is still used quite often to this day. But the disloyalty of it all is truly a hard pill to swallow. Just the sneakyosity of it all. Speaking of hard pills to swallow, here came yet another meme that was created from a seemingly innocuous stock image. This drawn image of a hand holding a pill bottle and one hand holding pills was a simple set of photos used to accompany a how-to article. But that didn't rule it out as an ideal canvas for people to get creative in all the ways they could use it. These images are most often seen accompanied by a multitude of life's truths that are hard for people to swallow. The image for this popular meme was pulled from none other than a WikiHow article entitled How to Lower Myostatin Levels, published back in 2017. The following year, the image was remixed and posted to none other than Reddit, where it quickly started to gain traction, picking up momentum and reaching its peak that same year. This meme is still used today, although the meme market isn't as saturated with it now as it was in years prior. Memes have become a hilarious part of modern society, and with new memes being created each and every day, there's no sign of them slowing down anytime soon. But I want to hear from you guys. What was your favorite meme from the list? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video and want me to keep the meme origin series going with the part four, hit the like button and comment part four down below. If you found this video educational or entertaining, it would be delightful, really delightful. If you would like, share and hit that subscribe button for more content don't worry i'll wait as always thanks so much for watching and until next time keep learning <laughs>